So we're currently at Bonn Rijsdijk University of Applied Sciences. Uh, it's a pretty young university. We have been around here for about 25 years. We've got five departments here and we're part of the Department of uh, Computer Science. Um, as a matter of fact, you're actually in a research institute right now, the Institute of Visual Computing. Founded in uh, about 10 years ago, roughly, uh, we're about 50 people doing research in different areas from computer graphics to human-computer interaction, computer vision, and some more topics. We have been working with robotics since a couple of years with partners in, in Canada, Simon Fraser University, where we work with the Beam robots on telepresence uh, scenarios, where we try to come up with new methods for navigating um, the robot in, let's say, dense, crowded areas with a lot of movement uh, to see if we can improve the awareness of the teleoperator of what's happening around the robot on a remote location. Uh, it's often difficult to plan for where you want to go if we build different kinds of systems uh, on top of the robot that would provide users more of a, let's say, a 360 kind of awareness. Um, based on that, we continued working on, uh, on methods uh, in which we really also want to do teleoperation with selection and manipulation, which you cannot do with the beam robot, it's just a, a camera on wheels. Um, for which reason we were looking for a robot that could also have at least one arm so that we could select and manipulate objects in the remote environment. And this is how we came to Richie at the end. So we're, we're particularly interested in using virtual reality to um, basically display the remote environments that we get a better spatial awareness about the environment that we're, that we're operating in. Currently, we started using the sample setup that we got from, uh, from Polar Robotics, uh, meaning the standard Unity uh, implementation. Uh, tried it out in, in stereo and yeah, quickly realized that stereo and Ritchie are not uh, too fond of each other right now because of the two different cameras that are in, in Ritchie. So we quickly uh, um, basically switch back to, to monoscopic view. Um, eventually, and we want to go back to stereoscopic uh, vision. Um, why I'm basically so concerned about the vision is that on the one hand has the advantage of stereoscopic um, vision allowing for a better spatial perception. On the other hand, the vision is also a bit of an issue because when we start moving the camera, we start to introduce some uh, additional movements uh, in the camera which can be troublesome. So in the past, we simply used Ricci as we're just having it on a stable position. But now, as you can see right now, we mounted it on a, on a moving platform and the moving platform introduces uh, two challenges. Uh, one meaning that you'll have some slight vibrations in the, uh, in the movement because of the platform itself and because of the acceleration and deceleration. Uh, and the second one is that currently um, we're not really able to navigate really well with the methods that we have. So you usually just use a micro joystick on one of the thumb pads or on the controls to navigate around, which similar to computer games will cause a conflict uh, because if I start to rotate using a joystick but I'm not physically trying to ro jo uh, rotate myself as a human being there will be a conflict with the body says okay there's something's wrong here. Um, this is one of the reasons why we're currently also extending the platform with let's say new methods for interaction uh, eventually then also trying to limit motion sickness which is the problem that we're looking at um, so that users can really move around by using in this case their own body. So we're using the body uh, as a human joystick uh, so that we introduce real physical motions caused by the, by the body and try to match the actual motion of the robot to that, which in VR we're already doing that for games and for other applications where it works really well. We want to try it out for the, for the robot itself. So it will solve some of the problems associated with the conflicts. The vision that we have right now, which is something that, that we're not doing alone, uh, is to have a teleoperation project where people can teleoperate a robot where they can seamlessly navigate and select and manipulate with objects. So you, basically what we have in the real world is that um, we often let's say make small movements before we need to grasp, for example, an object, which if we do it the wrong way with teleoperation, you basically switch the navigation, then you navigate around, then you need to switch back to selection and manipulation. So we want to make this, this process, this switch between both very seamless so that you can intuitively make those navigations uh, in space 
and I interact with objects in a, in a seamless and intuitive manner. So that's the actual um, project that we're working on right now. We're currently doing this completely in simulation. So the student that we have, which is uh, who's in, in Canada, uh, just uses this, the simulated version of, of Ricci uh, using, uh, let's say, a, a, yeah, a waiter bot simulation. So we're just doing waiting in, 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 let's say, a cafe where the robot needs to pick up some bottles and then move around uh, in the space and places the bottles in a specific manner, so not just straight on the table, but really moving around the person that is sitting there and then doing like that. And this is a rather difficult task because you need to do the, the fine um, navigation at the end and then place the object on the table. So this we're currently doing completely in, in simulation and eventually this is what we do want to do in, in, um, in real world by building up the same uh, s uh, system then here with the robot uh, to see how well we can switch between the, uh, the interaction paradigms. The seamless integration of navigation and selection manipulation is, is one goal. The second goal, which we talked about, is to reduce the motion sickness uh, for users who, uh, who are using um, the VR headset. The third part is, is another topic which I've been working on myself, which is haptics, meaning that I would really like to have additional feedback on the hands and the arms. I think you've also been working on that, I heard, uh, last week. Um, to see that if we grab objects or grab different kinds of textures that we really get a feeling of grasping objects with the specific properties like textures, like elasticity, like warmth, like weight, etc, etc. But I, what I think robotics will be moving to, which is a big topic also in, 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 in the other research institute, which is somehow connected to this project, uh, who's doing work on autonomous systems, um, will be also on ethical usage of robots, which is sometimes a bit tricky to do, but uh, something which is of interest, and which, which is always like the underlining factor. Uh, in, in many of the projects that we do. Other topics which I would be personally also very interested in is soft robotics, which I think is an area which has been progressing already over the last, let's say, decade, I would say, um, which, which offers, uh, I think, also new kinds of ways to interact with objects in the real world uh, and also different, you know, let's say, kinds of robots. So um, I think, the, the, let's say, the, the shape of the robots, the types of actions that you can perform with a robot, with soft robotics, is slightly different than using, let's say, rigid robotics, which I think is very interesting, uh, also technically complex, but uh, will be very interesting. The last part, which we're indirectly also um, um, uh, working on, is, is to really, let's say, improve social um, um, interactive robotics, meaning how do I really interact together with the robot. So currently we're doing mostly teleoperation, but eventually we also want to, let's say, work on, on, on co-work situations. So how do I communicate what I would like to work on? Does the robot understand what I'm going to do next? How do we operate in, an, in, an, in a, let's say, a best performing manner? And I think there are still many hurdles there which need to be overcome because oftentimes we're not thinking and talking about the same thing if we work together. Uh, and I think it's going to be an interesting question in many scenarios, from industry to, let's say, other types of environments. <laughs>